go ahead and record this one like we know what we're doing. All right, audio is on. It's audio's on? Audio's on. Really? So yeah. it, we, we kind of were ch chatting, but what's audio's on, right? Well, we were chatting before. I, well, audio was on, but I wasn't recording yet. Are we recording anything now? We're recording now. Really? Yeah. Can't you tell the difference? I don't know that I can. <laughs> I, I, I. Maybe you need to move this in a different spot. Okay. If we're getting you set up, folks, as you're coming in, you'll see that you have the fly on the wall winter scene of our famous fly getting cold today. It is down in the 60s in uh, Houston, 67 or so. Almost had to put a winter jug coat on. As the queen gets ready. Well, I guess I can shift over to the pallet now, right? We're, you got that cleared. Yeah, you want to shift to the pallet. I'm just uh, putting out paint. Got a little bit from last night's uh, YouTube show where we did the um, snow antique snowman looking painting. Okay. Okay, let's see. Anybody notice the title of this episode? Mm -hmm. One of those must hear stories. Somebody wants to know this is the best. Um, we don't. Tooth you, squeezer. You, that's the best paint tooth squeezer. I forgot where I got it, but you got really it from good. Another artist. Some another artist we saw, so we, you know, but really is nice. It's nice because it, it gives you enough leverage. Yeah, actually, it, yeah. Let's see. This all is all metal construction. Yeah, this is bamboo green. I'll put that over here too. All right. Okay. Just putting, I don't see the paints out anywhere, John. It's, is there, you're supposed to show paint too, or what? Oh, hold on. I'm putting paint out, and we're talking, and nobody's saying nothing, right? But that's all right. Well, that's got to be reset again. Why does it have to be reset? All right, hang on a second. I mean, you can go ahead and do it. Well, I'll just do my thing here, and just, John's just. I'm going to restore that there's, one. Guess there's no secret. We're doing a lily, water lily pond.
I had to change the, the settings because the, the palette wasn't right. Okay, starting so the over. The whole conversation just, it's gone, folks. I'm sorry. Man, you, you guys should have heard that story. It was so funny. Oh, my God. All right. Well, I have we'll stitches over we'll just, it. We'll just wait for a minute. Uh, yeah. This is an 8 by 10. This is our story time series. This painting is a commission piece. It is not a tutorial, but we're going to be tell I'm going to be telling stories uh, as, you know, as the weeks go by. I'll be telling stories with these kind of videos. And um, because... Uh, this is a new series we're doing called Storytime on YouTube, where I have a lot of stories I've written down and are, are made note of, and, they're, and some of them are hilarious. This one particularly is, uh, I can tell you because the Statue of Limitations has passed, so I can tell you about the Great Water Heist. And uh, we're gonna start with this, this, our lily pond. So that being said, um, uh, again, this is not a tutorial, so um, but I will tell you the story, and I will draw you. I'll, I'll finish on with that map. And hi, Andrew, thanks for coming. Okay, you're going all right. There is actually supposed to be sound with this. So, um, <laughs> hey, you're a fly on the wall. You get what you pay for. Uh, yeah, okay, but still, John, there is supposed to be a little sound with this. You know, just saying. Um, can't blame me. So anyhow, so this is acrylic painting, and I'm going to tell you the story about our, when Cinnamon, my daughter Cinnamon, who's currently known as the Art Sherpa, sounds like Prince, you know, currently known <laughs> as the Art Sherpa. She actually has a name at Cinnamon, right? But um, her grandmother would never call her that name because she felt it sounded like a dance hall girl. So she called her Cynthia and never, and, and sent checks for Christmas to Cynthia. Cinnamon can tell you those stories. But anyway... We, when she was a, in a first grade, we moved to California from Aspen, Colorado, and we moved our horses, and we bought four acres in a place called Olivenheim, which is near San Diego and Rancho Santa Fe. That's where we went, okay? And uh, there was nothing there, just a big, broad piece of land, and we built our house over a couple years and lived in our motorhome while doing it, and then we... Um, uh, and we noticed that when we were, uh, th th after, ha you know, having, while working on the house, we noticed that when it rained, um, what happened was that the, there was quite a runoff uh, in the, uh, from, from the properties above, okay? And uh, there was a lot of water that came across our driveway, almost washed it out. We had a, first thing we had to do was build a, um, uh, uh, you know, kind of cement the road, right? Because we had a dirt driveway, but we had to cement the road where that water crossed or we wouldn't have been able to get out, leave the house because it would have just, it was such a, a lot of fast water. So Cinnamon's dad thought what we had to have was a pond because uh, why not, right? So it's that was his pond. thinking. We should have a pond, right? Makes Be sense. Because you had all this water anyway. Well, it didn't run all year. It just ran some of the time, but he thought we could capture the water and um, be very successful with that. That was his goal, was to capture the water and be successful uh, with the water capture. Well, you know, we didn't have any way to dig a pond, but um, when we were we went at church uh, one day, um, we were talking, because we were new to, the, you know, to that area, so people were being real friendly. And uh, not that they wouldn't have anyway, but I'm just saying people were being friendly. And it came out that one of the guys that uh, was in our congregation his job was to, you know, he dug ponds for, like, um, SeaWorld. And he said, and I said, well, that sounds wonderful, but, you know, we, we you know, you know we don't, I hate to compare us to church mice, but that, how much will, will it cost, right? You know, it's just that kind of thing. And he said, well, he said uh, he could get the tractor or this, you know, this digger thing. He could get it and... Um, it would. Uh, it was going to be something that we thought we could afford. We had a budget for building the house, and Kobe thought we could fit that in the budget. It was a lot less than what he normally charged. Basically, charged, and we had. I oh no, we had to pay for the trip. I know what we had to pay. We didn't have to pay him. He was doing it for free. Now it's all coming back to me. It's been years since I've told this story. Uh, if we would pay for just the cost of getting the the truck to drop the um, the digger the backhoe thingy off. You know, that that would be good enough. And, you know, 
I gotta tell you that when this thing showed up at the house, it was the size of the pond I had in mind. <laughs> it couldn't have turned around in the size in the pond that I was thinking. I don't know what Colby was thinking, but but you know I don't know from pack tractors, right? But it's you know it, it all sounded like a good idea at the time, yes. And um, so uh, anyway, so he proceeds to uh, dig this pond, and then of course we couldn't just have a pond, we had to have a spillway for the water, when it filled up, where was the water going to go? Because the water was going to keep running. So once we filled the pond, we had to have somewhere for this water to go. For the overflow. For the overflow. So that required uh, cement, and, um, and apparently Colby knew something about building. Cinema's dad was a very smart guy. Not that he's, he's still alive, so I suppose he still technically is a smart guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just anyhow, um, uh, so we 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 get a spillway, and then we had to figure. Then we had to line this, the, you know, between the pond and the and the driveway was, I don't know what about four car lengths, and so we had to um, um, kind of line that area with rocks, so. Um, you know, that the water wouldn't just make it gouge a huge big ditch, right? So there was a lot of uh, work on this thing, um, and we decided what we wanted in the pond was an island in the middle. It was so big, we put an island about the size of a Volkswagen car, and we had all these rocks that came out of the, when he dug the pond. There were just rocks everywhere. So, um, so what we ended up doing was using the rocks and lining the base of the island, which was sort of oval-shaped, with... Um, with these rocks. In fact, if you see this finger right here, see how it's kind of crooked? Cinnamon, when she dropped a rock on this finger and broke it, so, you know, I'm not counting things like that, but she did, you know, <laughs> it's just so you know. And um, so anyway, it was quite a project. In between building the house and doing all that stuff, we had our, and the horses and everything, we had this pond going, and then we weren't, um, we couldn't just have the island. We decided that what we needed was a bunch of little houses. We would have some ducks, and they should the island would, would be safe for them, and um, and they would have a little little houses to live in. So we took all these rocks, which trust me, we had a ton of rocks, and they all came out of the horse pasture too. We had a small tractor, nothing like the Kaboto John wanted, but it was a little Montgomery Ward tractor, about the size of a lot, small light riding lawnmower with a bucket and a wagon we could pull, and we, we would drive around the pastures and fill that up with um, um, uh, rocks and then bring it over to the pond, and then we would proceed to, to build our walls and stuff, and rock walls. So, um, and it was neat. I mean, that was, it was, you know, as ponds goes, and it was such a big pond that we called it, we named it Lake Cinnamon. And her nick The pond really became a lake. Yeah, and it was Lake Cinnamon, and... Um, and then we named the island Bear Island after my daughter, who is, her nickname was Cinnamon Bear. Okay, we even had signs. You know, just, you know, being an artist, of course we had signs, right? <laughs> so um, and I'm going to dry this and continue on with the story. Oh no, this a is my yeah, I know, but you know, we, we got to yeah, tell you about the water ears, heist. I'm not going to mute it because I forget to turn it on. So deal with it. <laughs> we were flying along anyway. Okay, so the pond was, we had, like I say, the four acres, and almost four acres, and the pond was at the top of the, at the bottom of the flat part, of, and we had, a, our house was up on a hill, of what they called, in California they called them uh, pads, because somebody had carved uh, like a flat area into the hillside, and, uh, and that was where our um, house was, and then we had a long driveway, that, and I'm going to draw you a map and show you what that might have looked like so you can kind of get a better picture. I always like stories when you have maps. You can kind of visualize more what we're talking about. And we had, we had, we had planted uh, eucalyptus trees everywhere and, um, and some bamboo around our pond. And um, it was a pretty nifty setup, I, I think, right? 
um, myself. I, I think it was very pretty. And then oh, we decided we, we needed to get some ducks. So we did. And then we, we needed some goldfish. And then we couldn't just do goldfish. We did koi fish. Um, we had koi fish in the pond. And, uh, and we, we got those from, uh, there used to be a, a little publication in California called The Penny Saver. And somebody was selling, uh, one of the um, doctors in the area was selling off his koi fish that didn't meet the, uh, the standards of uh, show fish. And um, so I think about $20 investment in, in koi fish. And then Cinnamon got, when we took Cinnamon with us and she got to, um, she was so cute. She was like, you know, she was six and adorable at six. Well, not that she's not so adorable now, but really at six, this kid was a stunner. So anyway, um, he told her that she could have any uh, fish she wanted for 10 cents because he was fell in love with cinnamon. The problem is cinnamon's one of those kids that you can take her into anything, any store. I don't know if it's a hardware store, a car store, uh, you know, a fish store, or whatever. She will find the most expensive thing you've got and want that, right? Sure. And, and I think he was absolutely shocked because he had to give, he gave us this beautiful fish. Um, well, he didn't give, I guess he did give it to us. And then and so all these little fishies went back to the, um, the ranch. And um, so we had, we didn't have any, we had no dogs. Um, Colby didn't want a dog. We had some cats, but he did not want a dog. We had neighbor's dogs, but we had no dogs. So we really didn't have any good way to protect ducks from the coyotes. California has a lot of coyotes, and um, and they they they're just, you know my horseshoer, for instance, you know tells the story of one of his clients was walking her poodle or something, and the coyote just came up and just took it right out of her arms, kind of thing, made off with the poodle. Um, hmm. So they 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 were you know, and it was just I remember. One of them, one time, looking at, um, they were up on the driveway by the house, and he wasn't shooing away when I came out. He gave me this look like, you and what army, lady? You know, it was one of those look like, bored kind of, oh, oh, here she comes, right? Kind of thing. Not, no fear. Okay, so anyway, we had no way to um, protect our, uh, our, our ducks except for this island, Okay. And, and the fact that the pond was deep enough where the coyotes wouldn't swim out. Okay, so I thought those are the two things that were going to protect us. Well, if you, you know, in California, where we, at that time, let's see, me with this thing here. At the time we were there, um, California was, um, uh, it was still it was still a very expensive place to live, Southern California, um, and probably one of the most expensive things was electricity. But believe it or not, water was just pricey, pricey, pricey. Okay, the water, and um, uh, you know your 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 water bill was something. Well, normally you wouldn't have it. You know we didn't we didn't. Um, water the pastures particularly they kind of took care of themselves and um, there was about to the right of us um, there was a uh, like about 50 acres that was undeveloped to the right of us that was owned by a couple of college uh, professors from the, the Tel Aviv University there and um, they had what I remember most about those guys was that they had uh, their dogs were real wolves, and uh, they were kind of, you know, all avant-garde people, you know, when you saw them young and handsome, but, but odd. And um, <laughs> they were odd, I'm sorry. And anyhow, they said that we could put our horses over there too. So, um, so we had not only our property with our pastures, but we had the advantage of being able to uh, put our horses over on this property. Now, what was unique about this property that they had and made it probably, everybody was, it was like the great land grab back when we moved there, okay? And the, probably the main thing was that um, everybody wanted acreage, but their acreage was um, uh, kind of marred by the fact that the only access they had to get to it was down our driveway. 
it didn't have an access from the other side. It's a cliff. And so they did and they didn't have a rightful easement. We just out of the goodness of our heart we could give them an easement, but otherwise they had no way of getting to their property really. And I'm sure they got it was what's what's the expression? Got it for a song. But on the other hand, um, there were some pitfalls with their property. The other thing was, it was very sloped and on a hill. It ended up going right behind our house and going on for a long time. And then it bordered on uh, tomato fields, uh, tomato, tomato fields. So uh, we really did in a, in, in a Laurel area. And I think they had about 20 acres. So we got to use um, their property too, which was lovely. I mean, I got to tell you, that was nice. And... Um, and I, and I appreciated that very much that we could, um, we could use their, um, their, their uh, land. Um, but the, and the downside, the other reason, other people we had to give the easement to was that their, what they had running through their property was a giant, giant pipe that went from Escondido all the way down to the, the uh, uh, sewage plant in the... Um, uh, Oceanside, okay, a, a water treatment plant, and then what happened there was that um, then that water was then treated again, and then it was they had a two mile uh, pipe that went out into the ocean, and then it was dumped out there, okay, so that's where this water and the, the, you, and the thing about it was was the, our neighbor's property their pipe wasn't buried completely. Part of it was sticking up um, out of the gra ground for about, like, and actually in the open air for a while, you could walk under it. It's huge. It's huge. Like two Volkswagens around kind of thing. And uh, before it went back in the ground again, and they had a, like a, a hatch on the top, okay? Because every once in a while, the pressure would be too great from the uh, the, Esca the the Escondido plant, and um, their uh, their pipe would um, burst, and it, the the lid would go flying off. This heavy heavy lid, you can imagine how many tons that weighed. It would go failing off, and then I know you're going, oh my God! It, 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 yeah, I know. I'm telling you, it went on. It would go off, and then. Um, so then the, um, uh, uh, they, th then the sewer people went from Escondido would have to drive out and uh, put the lid back on. The problem is they didn't have any way to get there either without going through our property. So over the years, we made friends with those guys. And the first time, we had something in our driveway called decomposed granite. Now... Decomposed granite, it's just, I don't know what it is, it's probably that, but it's, it's, we couldn't afford a paved driveway, but, and it wasn't inexpensive, but it was cheaper than, it was better than sand or something, right? So we had that. So we made a deal with them, this was my idea too, and I thought it was pretty clever. I said, well, yeah, sure, you can have the easement, just bring us a load of decomposed granite. I mean, because, I mean, it's a water carbon, they probably had tons of it sitting there somewhere. Uh, for our driveway uh, every year, and sure, you have access to your pipe. So, and that's what they did, and that's what they did. And so we had, because we had this very long driveway that went out of our house and then past the neighbor's house and uh, past June Isaac's house. It went past everybody's house and then uh, out to the street, curved back again, okay? So, uh, and the thing with it was is that... Um, I remember the first time, I think this was maybe before the pond had blown. I remember the first time um, we saw that blow, the, the water blow. Um, I think Colby or one of us made the com comment that, um, wow, um, that's a waste of water. That would make a pond, okay? That would be a great pond. You had that water. Think what the pond would be like if you had that water in it. My gosh, right? That kind of thing. And uh, you can see where we're all going with this, right? And, uh, of course, uh, something like that would be totally illegal to tap into any of that water and take it, as you well you could imagine. But nonetheless, um, I'll tell you, it was a thought that we had. And what was interesting to me 
was that when the when the when the um, the guys from the water department came, they always had come back, came up to the house for a cup of coffee, and we and we chat, and uh, and 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 really had the nicest time visiting with them, and um, they were just nice guys, and uh, we all I felt we got to be sort of friends in a funny sort of way. Does that make sense? They, I mean, they liked us. And of course, Cinnamon's dad is a riot, so um, not necessarily funny, but peculiar. And just, I'm sure they just, just talking to him must have been so interesting, okay? Because he is, he's one of those people that could, so smart, he could uh, build an atomic bomb in your basement with just a few tools, and then if you promise not to pay him, he might do it for you, because he offered him any money, then you ruined the whole project. We had some real disagreements about finances and what constituted okay, right? But that's another story. But we're talking about the great water heist. Yes and yes. So um, the first year that it it rained in, in, in the winter, and it really rained hard, we were able to, we filled our pond up, and uh, which was great. We filled our pond up, and we got, um, we got the, um, uh, 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 we, Cinnamon had a little a uh, little rowboat, and uh, she would ride out and and feed the ducks. And she'd row out there and feed the ducks, and um, that we could manage to do too. We tried for some chickens. Oh no, we and we they didn't live. So what we did was we got some more chickens from the feed store, and we put them in the. Um, we put them on the island in the little chicken house, the little houses. The ducks, you know, the ducks could come and go, but the we we, we put those chickens there because uh, because besides the coyotes, there were raccoons, but we didn't know about the raccoons at the time. I mean, there was wildlife. I remember seeing a um, um, a uh, uh, wildcat. You know, really pretty. I mean, that, this uh, civilization was still, still country, even though we were only, you know, just a few minutes from the ocean. We weren't, you know, it was and it was nice, but we we could um, uh, we could definitely um, had a lot of wildlife. You know, hawks, a lot of things that. Um, it's the reason why they call them chicken hawks, isn't it, John? Probably so. So um, anyhow, the um, um, so we had we got the chickens and we put them on the in the in the, so she would row out to feed the chickens, and then we would feed the ducks and um, it was a very very peaceful setting. You know. Um, Colby would uh, go behind the house and fly his hand gliders in the afternoon, late in the afternoon. We, he, he was one of the first ones to ever put a motor on a hand glider. And he, um, um, so he did that, and uh, we had our pond. Well, the problem was you had a pond, and then summer came, and you didn't have a pond. Because what happened was it would start to evaporate, and we didn't have any more water to put in the pond. So the first thing we did was we could see this was going to be a problem. So we called our um, our, our um, first solution was to trap more water. So our th Colby's thinking was, well, what we need is that we had enough property to put in a, a pond above that one, just sort of like a holding pond, literally. And um, if we put that in, uh, uh, it would then catch the water, and it would then seep down the, and, and then keep feeding our pond. And not only that, but the, the problem with the pond was it started to fill up with silt. So this holding pond, that the genesis behind that was that it would um, it would hold the water, and um, 
and then filter out the water too so that by the time it got to our pond, it, the, all the sand was in the, was in the holding pond. So we paid our friend to come out again and dig another pond, and um, which she did. And, uh, and we had this above there, and then it, you, you could kind of see it from the house. It was kind of hidden by some, by that time, some trees. So this worked uh, pretty well. So even in the summertime, we still had some, we still had our, our big lake because this holding pond was um, uh, catching the water, yeah? But then there's still drought time, right? And um, uh, we ended up with uh, times when we didn't have any water. And, uh, and if you went and used the garden hose, which we would do in the upper pond, which seems like a logical thing, just take the garden hose, we're feeding the horses and everything, and let's just go on up there and, um, and fill, it up, fill it up. Well, we did, but then we got the water bill for that. And this was not, dear friends, a practical solution uh, 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 by any means, was having that, um, having that pond uh, uh, f filled up with the garden hose, okay? It just was not, that was not going to fly because it was just too expensive. And, um, which was a shame because, you know, cause we kind of, we, we really liked it. So it's, a, it's interesting to talk to you guys and do the um, painting at the same time because I'm trying to remember the story and still get these um, all these little lights and darks in. But we're doing it, right? So anyhow, by that time, these, uh, this, we'd had several, a couple of years later, two, three years later, we'd had several eruptions of that big water... Um, um, pipe next door to us. It had, um, it had, uh, it was like Vesuvius. It had gone off and we had called the guys a couple of times. And the last time it blew, they didn't put the lid back on. So Colby got to looking at that and he was thinking that if he could run a siphon into that hole where all that water was going. Now it wasn't sewage, it was, it was already treated water, but it was like um, the kind of water they use in cities to like water trees and stuff. It wasn't considered potable, but it wouldn't have killed you either, right? Gray water. Kind of gray water, right? So um, anyhow, Colby was looking about, if he could get, he could put in a, um, <laughs> A siphon, we only had to do it go about two blocks with pipe, and um, and we could get it to the pond and fill up the pond. And if we did it during the week, um, or like, like on the weekend, if we did it on the weekend, we could then take the siphon off and um, and put it all back, and nobody would know. We'd stolen the water, and our pond wasn't so big that they would miss it, miss it downstream. Make sense? Well, you got. <laughs> I know you're going. You're kidding, right? And, no, I'm not kidding. Makes sense to me. And um, in fact, at one time, our friends from the sewer department had hinted it was a shame that we couldn't have the water for that pond. But of course, you know that that, that wasn't that was against the law. You couldn't have it. Okay. So anyhow. Um, uh, I'm sitting here thinking, trying to see where I went need all this green. So anyhow, the uh, upshot of this all was I got to dry this, and then I'll tell you what happened. Another cliffhanger. Um, 
Any questions before I keep going, John? Anything? Not that I'm aware of. All right. So um, I'm going to draw a map of what this was. So um, um, I think I have to put my water lilies in there now so I can figure out where the, the, the actual flowers in. So the thing was, you know, we needed a lot of PVC pipe. And um, let's see, let me just get some. You, you were going two blocks, right? Yeah, a couple blocks, yeah. By the time we got to there and then down and around and kind of I'll show it back, but two blocks, not quite, but almost. Okay. But Colby thought, well, if we got the pipe, we could bury it in the grass because it wasn't mowed. You know, it was like a field. And so most part, you wouldn't see the pipe. Even if somebody looked, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see it. Does that make sense? That was his thinking, is you absolutely would not see the pipe if we did it like that. So, th but the problem was, how, how much was the pipe cost? So we talked about it, but nobody actually did anything about it because, you know, I mean, that's a lot of PVC pipe, right? But one of the things that Colby liked to do, because we had four acres and he was a bit of a collector, he'd like to go to the junkyard and see the kind of deals he could make at the junkyard. He loved going to the junkyard. So uh, when we were there one day, there was, I guess it was a leftover building project, and there was all this PVC pipe for the taking. For like a couple hundred bucks, we could get all that TV, that pipe. I mean, ton of it, you know, and um, we just had to get it, yeah. So uh, uh, now at the time, we didn't have a truck. We had a little tiny Honda car that was uh, like on a motorcycle engine. We had no way to get the uh, pipe back to the house, but uh, he really wanted that pipe, okay? So we ended up renting a big truck of some kind, and then he had me drive it, and I didn't, couldn't get it out of second gear. Drove it all the way back from Escondido in, I don't know, like first gear or something, with people honking and yelling obscenities at me, okay? Not very nice. Um, it was one of those, and I can drive a stick shift, but it had more gears than that. Does that make sense? Yeah. One of those that had a lot more gears. So, anyhow, the, um, so we got the pipe, and he, he made a siphon, and then, um, uh, uh, if we, we, we laid all the pipe in, in such a way that it all, wasn't glued or anything, a couple pieces, but mostly it wasn't glued. We just, what we needed was the, um, uh, we needed to be able to take it apart and hide it and then just get it out on the weekends. Fill the pond up and then put the pipe, put all this pipe away. That was the, that was the big plan, okay? So, the, and, and you know what? We had a pond full of water. It worked. It absolutely worked. It was fabulous. Um, you can't believe. I mean, it. It was such. It was such an amazing deal. Um, uh, really nice. And and our pond, the big pond filled up. It. It changed color just a little bit, right? <laughs> okay. But it did work, okay? It absolutely, it, it just, it was, it was great, guys. It was great. We just loved it. And um, that was all fine. And, and, and so that summer, we, we had our pond even, and, and, you know, when, when normally we would have, it would have been very low and our ducks were happy and... Um, and all was life, all was well with the world. I'm going to take a minute and just draw you a picture of this pond. Yeah. 
in the thoroughbred. So we had this this property, uh, so, and our house was up on a hill like this. We had this sort of we had a house like this with a slope, and then another big one like this, and with some round windows. It was a modern house, and then we had a driveway that down here like this, and then crossed the spillway, or this area where the water ran, and then out here to our fence, and then just kept on going. Then we had a hill like this. This was the neighbor's property here, over there, their stuff. And then our pond was here, and then we had the spillway like that. And then when there was, uh, was extra water, it ran this way and then off the property. And then we had another holding pond up here. There were hills here, hills there. And then there were hills, and this was the neighbor's stuff behind us, okay? So this is, uh, and then we had a bunch of trees. And then we had our little island in the, the middle of the pond, okay? And there was a little rowboat. Cinnamon would go out about that size and go out and feed the ducks, okay? So that's, that's our time. And then... Then Colby built a giant windmill. Ooh, nice windmill, babe. You've even been to Holland, and that's what you come up with? It's a, like a windmill, you know? <laughs> it's like a pinwheel. Well, uh, yeah, you built it, and it was all colors of the rainbow for me. Of course it is. You well, people are artists. <laughs> anyway, and it worked. And it would also, if the water seeped down, it would pump it back into the pond. So we had this windmill. And so what we needed to do was way over here was the pipe. And we needed to, and we had sort of a, an easement that went along like this above the horse pasture. We had horse corral in here. There was a little easement. And then, so what we had to do is we had to lay that pipe so it went down here. Well, maybe it's somehow, I don't know. And, and anyhow, went around, and but all gravity fed and ended up in this pond um, somehow. It did. It was a lot of pieces and, and all hid by the guys. I think it kind of went this way or into the pond. Uh, it worked. It was a lot of water pressure and it went into the pond. That's how we did that. Okay? Uh, cool, right? So the. Um, and he also got the parts for the windmill at the, um, the, the junkyard. Colby really loved that junkyard. It's always there. We had a, um, tell you more about the pond, but uh, we had a, he was always building stuff. We, he built us our, his, our, his, our own um, uh, satellite uh, TV thing uh, in the house too. We had one of those. And, um, uh, so we had stuff. And cinnamon, and the other thing we would do when we had this pond would be that um, we would do uh, like really nice um, parties down by the pond. And um, the pond had a lot of adventures. And before I tell you about the great water heist and how I got in trouble, I'm going to tell you a few more pond stories uh, as long as we're talking about ponds here. And um, when we were first um, clearing all the land, because we, we had to clear everything. It was all the sagebrush and stuff when we first moved there. So we, we had the, we, you know, we, after the pond, we were still clearing stuff, right? So uh, we had this really nifty bonfire down by our spillway. And... Um, and we used the extra sagebrush that we had from clearing the, all this ground. We didn't, there was, you know, we didn't, we had something called, we called the chutty pucker that would kind of grind up the, the, um, uh, the, um, all the wood, that, you know, from the sagebrush and stuff. But still, there was this, um, there was still stuff, you had to do something with it, right? And so, uh, you know, and Colby was born in Wyoming, his name is dad. And his, his answer was, um, well, just burn it. So I can remember one night we, um, we, we had a beautiful, we had some people over and we had a barbecue down by the pond. 
And we had a bonfire, beautiful bonfire, just absolutely gorgeous. And um, the um, we'll see. One of the things we did when we did the bonfire was we had like um, we, cinnamon made a little boat uh, out of wood, and we put some candles on it. And we just we floated all these candles out onto the pond, and we played candles on the water from the dragon song and. I mean, it was a, it was magic. All the little magic candles. We had our friends over, and you know, it was it was a lovely evening, John. Just absolutely spectacularly nice. It right? sounds like a nice time. Yeah, it was a good time by all. And then we heard the fire engines, <laughs> and we had this neighbor up the street, and she was a volunteer fire department. She was Lehman had its own volunteer fire department. I don't know where they got the truck. They had it somewhere. The volunteer fire department, and she um, she came roaring down the driveway in this big fire truck, honking at the front gate to let her in, you know. And the group, there was all these guys, and they were they were all volunteer people. Okay, I think that's great, you know, that they did that. And then they proceeded to explain to us, new people in the neighborhood, that there were fire restrictions in the state of California. Uh -huh. And you just couldn't go out and start lighting fires just because you wanted a bonfire. It wasn't done. <laughs> you had barbecues for a reason, and that's what you used. And you sure didn't go do bonfires. Okay? So, uh, anyhow, uh, she, we got a big warning. If, we, if she ever saw a bonfire down there again, we were toast. We got, a, we, got a little, we got off a little bit because... We were newbies, but other than that, we would have been toast. So that was the end of. Uh, and you can't, you can't go get a fire department fire permit. It sounds easy enough, but you go get one, and they're not going to give you one. Guess what? She made it sound like, well, well you just go get a fire permit. Couldn't go get a fire permit. You absolutely couldn't do that, right? So, uh, sadly, sad to say, uh, that was the last of our bonfires. Uh, we still did the candle on the water with the pond, but that was the, definitely the last of our bonfires. As I t tell you this story of the water. So I'd had sort of a bad premonition um, the, for about two days that something was going to go wrong. It just did. Do you ever have those, John? Yes. You just, you have a bad premonition. You yep. know something's not quite right and you're not sure yep. what. And um, uh, it turned out that um, we, this, I think this was probably the, maybe the first or second year we had done the, ho the garden hose thing with the siphon. We'd been doing it for quite a while and very successful. And people come by and couldn't believe we could afford the water for the pond kind of thing, right? Because it was a big, big lake here, and couldn't believe we were, you know, could even afford that. And uh, we never, you know, everybody, cinnamon, everybody sworn to secrecy. Nobody said where the water came from. Cinnamon understood under penalty of uh, no TV for the next ten hundred years that there would be no mention of how we got the water for the pond. <laughs> and it really required when we went to set up the, the. Um, the pipe, it required all of us to move it. It wasn't just me, but, you know, Colby had to move, we all had to move it, and we used the tractor to move some of the pieces, the little Montgomery Ward tractor, and we all had it kind of, the extra pipe was hidden behind the horse corral, okay? Uh, kind of down there, we had a little kind of a shed thing, and it was all hidden there. And um, so I'm having fun painting all these lily pads, telling you the story. We did not have any water lily pads on our pond. Uh, we didn't have any water lilies, but we we had frogs. We had a very annoying frog, and um, lots of frogs. In fact, lots of frogs. And we lived way up on the hill, and then d down toward the pond, uh, you, you know, you could hear all these frogs at night. And there was one particular very loud frog, and. Um, he kept Colby awake. Colby was, uh, he, he found he couldn't sleep with that frog. I mean, I don't know what he was going on about, but, but he could not sleep with that frog. And he took his pellet gun one down one night and sat on the spillway 
and waited for it. Huh. So he could uh, he could eliminate the noise. And I, uh, you know, the, the frog still, you know, made noise, and so I don't know how he figured out he got the frog, but um, it was really like Princess and the Pea with him with stuff like that. So anyway, um, I had this bad premonition. And sure enough, uh, Colby was gone. He was off somewhere doing something, which, which he never was. He was always around. He was off somewhere. And um, uh, our siphon had torn loose and it floated downstream all the way to Oceanside Whoops. where the power plant found it. Whoops. The siphon, this plastic siphon. So then <laughs> they wanted to know whose siphon was it, right? Okay. Who had the siphon? And um, of course, they, you know, they couldn't tell at first. I mean, there's no way they could tell it went, went from, it was ours at first. They, you know, and, and this was before drones, right? <laughs> well, you think about the technology today. Couldn't get away with and it. And you couldn't get away with it. But this was before drones and cell phones. Did we have cell phones? No, there were no cell phones. I know, this, that's so long ago that there were no cell phones. But we did have phone service at the house, you know, but we didn't have a cell phone, and nobody did, right? So, um, uh, I think I'm going to paint these flowers and then come back to this. Uh, let's see, where's my tablet again? I was mixing colors with something here. So I get a phone call from our guys in Escondido. And, um, and they said, hey, Ginger, how you doing? Good, whoever you are, you know, I mean, yeah, whoever they were, right? Oh, good, how are you, and stuff like that. And they said, well, I'll tell you, we got a notice from the plant in Escondido that um, they found a siphon <laughs> in the um, in their uh, in the in the pipe in their pipe thing and the um, uh, they're going to come out to they figure this that came somewhere in, in your neighborhood and they're going to come out and see if they can figure out where this uh, pipe came from. And I'm absolutely in a dead panic, okay? Dead panic, because I'm thinking, oh, my God, we're all going to die. We're going to go to jail forever. This is Colby's shitty idea, another one of his weird <laughs> shits he's roped me into. <laughs> just, just, I was so mad, right? Because he wasn't around, and we had, I, I I wasn't going to be able to move that pipe by myself, and um, here we here we had the 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 water people were water thugs were on our tail, right? And again, I couldn't reach Colby, and of course this was before cell phones. So once once he left the house, he didn't work. I mean, we both uh, we both lived off investments, so he didn't he didn't work. But I can't remember. Probably was shopping or something with the. The, the, the funny yard again, right? But wherever he was, he wasn't where I could get a hold of him, okay? So, um, I thought, who can I trust to call and have them not turn me into the police? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Just, who do I know well enough? And I thought, you know, I can't call any of the people from our church because they might feel obligated to tell on us just because, you know, they were real big on doing the right thing, right? Just, no, we're not going to call those people, right? Uh, I couldn't think of anybody to call. And then I, we had some acquaintances I'd known through horseback riding. And the guy was retired. He was in his 70s, older guy. And um, so uh, I called up Kirk. And I said, I said, hi, Ginger, what's going on? I said, 
I can't, how fast can you get to my house? And I lived out in the country and he lived in the city, so it wasn't fast, right? But I said, I think I need your help and I explained the situation. And then, so then he, um, he drove out and then the two of us frantically went around picking up pipe at a breakneaking speed of, we're going to die here soon if we don't get this done. I tell you what, if we'd murdered, uh, you know, 10 illegal aliens in the backyard, I couldn't have been more scared, right? Just, just, it was just that kind of day, right? <laughs> so we got, we got the, the pipe for the, we got it, we got it moved and hidden. There was still a little bit of it left, but for the most part, we got it moved and hidden before, you know, they came, they suspected us because they could see we had a pond and the water on the pond was an unusual color. It wasn't quite pond color anymore. It had a tint of green to it. So you could very cleverly draw the conclusion that we were the culprits, but the proof was no longer there. There was no pipe evidence. You know, they didn't have they didn't have the smoking gun to um, to get us, um, uh, which was lucky for us, right? Because absolutely, they they, they did not have the smoking gun, and um, uh, the the water people came by and saw me like a few days later, they came by, and I've never owned up to anything, never, we never admitted we did anything. You know. so well, the, why would you? Well, you know, you see in crime shop, people always confess, no confessions here, right? Because, you know, um, and then by that time, we had a lot of justifications, and you know, when, when you do these bad things, you always justify it in your mind, like, well, I was really doing them a favor, they should be glad I did that, we used some of the water and just didn't throw it away. You know, you can, <laughs> you can justify it, you, say, you hear me, right? You can justify anything if you're just silly enough, right? And, um, but that was, uh, that was the end of our, um, uh, our, our pond as far as uh, being able to, to steal the water and heist the water. And I think that, um, uh, let's see, I want to do this. I want to put it this way. But that's, that was just so crazy because um, there were a lot of, a lot of things that happened on that property that caused great concern. Uh, we had, you know, drug dealers living right up the street on the, on the, you know, sharing the same acreage. And, um, as I continue on, since you've already heard the pond story, I might share the story about how their dog attacked cinnamon. And then we got in, got, we got in conflict with the mob over, uh, whatever the deal they were doing. So, I'll continue on with that story in a minute. What do you think? How am I doing so far, you guys? Well, I think you're doing great. Fish have got to have water. Yeah. Ducks have to have water. How long, so how long did you get the water coming in for? We had the water for probably um, all summer. And we just, he just lost the siphon. It was working like a champ. It was a clever idea. But they also realized they couldn't leave the, um, that, that lid off. Okay. And so, um, that's the other thing too, is that, that, that was the, they couldn't, they couldn't just keep leaving the lid off that, um, big pipe like that, that big pipe. Um, and so they didn't. But, uh, and the guys from the water department, you know, were, we, it just was never mentioned again, as you can well imagine. All right. Uh, just, just, uh, some things are just, but like that feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm going to get killed right here now. And, and again, Colby wasn't there to take the fall, 
it would have been me. Though I probably could have thought of something. I'm fairly quick on my feet. I probably just, nonetheless, um, we, uh, we didn't do it anymore. It was a floodplain, so it's not like you could build like a barn down there instead of the pond. It was a floodplain. But then since then, if you go back to that, our old house there in Lumenheim, since then, they've um, um, changed the zoning there, and they've, they've diverted that water that used to run into our property. It no longer does that. Well, that's it, not very really nice of them. And so uh, now there's a big barn, barn there, which we never could do because of the um, uh, circumstances with that. We were never allowed a barn. And... Uh, I mean, we had, you know, we had to have everything we had there had to be removable. Make sense? Yes. So that's what happened. But uh, Cinnamon used to, it was, it's a driveway was quite long. And um, we, Cinnamon used to catch the school bus when she uh, went to you know school there, California, in grade school, she caught the bus um, at the end of the driveway. Which you know, you know, I think about that about how naive we were as parents, okay? Because it, she was the only kid at the bus stop. You know, where the bus came in there, other kids right up the road. But. Um, Anybody could have snatched and grabbed that kid. I oh, mean, different at, times. Not that different. I don't think it was that different times. No, no, um, no, I, I think. I probably didn't have any experiences like that. Well, yeah, but I mean, but it didn't occur to you. See what I mean? That was the problem. Yeah. It, we, well, it didn't we occur were, to me. We were kids. When we, we had our kids, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, like for instance, oh. when I was a kid, kid. We walked to school and everything. Oh heck yeah! And and that was fine. And Cinnamon did walked it in to Aspen. Walked school through the snow. Yeah, Cinnamon, uh, you know, walked to school in Aspen. And uh, uh, which you know, and and there were, but there was a whole bunch of kids that went with her. She wasn't by herself. And then later we got this private school for her because if you've met my daughter on YouTube, you know she's a bit of a smart ass. I mean, mm -hmm. she's smart, but I wonder where she gets that from. I couldn't imagine. Probably mm -hmm. dad, I'm sure. Um, she's a bit of a smart ass, and um, so uh, she had a way of aggra aggravating the teachers. And um, her th third grade teacher was, um, uh, you know, not a reasonable woman. I, I felt, you know, she had, had, you know, the expression "great expectations." And so, uh, Cinnamon um, was always seemed to be in trouble a little bit with her. Never had her homework done the way she wanted, or any of that stuff. And she managed to go um, 72 days without doing any homework, you know, and she'd come back with a different excuse every time. Um, very clever ones, too, I got to tell you. So finally, over spring break, she had to do it all because she'd kind of not done it. Um, but that's, I mean, that's, you know, that's a kid for you if they can get away with that, right? But we decided that it would be in her best interest to put her in um, um, in a private school, if we could. So, uh, which we did. We found a private school, and it was the lady that founded this school had the, um, she had actually started gifted schools for kids in America. She was older, and she had, this was her own private school, and. Um, the kids liked it so much they actually sent a note home from school telling the kids that they had to um, 
uh, go to, to not come to school early. There was nobody to watch them because everybody was so excited to get there. You didn't have to get you. you they were out of bed in, in, in at that school as fast. They just loved it. Whatever they whatever they were doing, however they taught it, everybody just loved that school. Okay. So anyway, so cinnamon. Um, Cinnamon, and we got her in that school, which was probably one of the better things we ever did as far as schoolwork goes. And then she rode her bicycle to school from there. We got her bicycle. And I remember our neighbors came, and we got, this is a Murray bike, I think. Remember the Murray bicycles? Oh, yeah. So, um, anyway, so Cinnamon... Um, She was riding her bicycle to school, and um, it the chain broke or something. It had a flat tire. It all all fell apart at the same instant. Right, it was bad. And so my neighbor stopped by the house to say, you know, because this is before cell phones, right? And she says, you know, your child is down the block, cursing and screaming her bicycle, and. and, and, and <laughs> And it's broken. <laughs> so, uh, you know, her dad and I went down there and rescued her, and she was just hot, as, just so mad, right? Dropped her off at school, and then we got her a pretty wonderful bike after that that didn't break. We gave her a pretty good bicycle, but like I say, she, she bicycled to school. And, and really, and that was, a good, that was a good experience, okay? And and that was really nice, and, and it was not so much traffic. Nowadays, you see, this is the problem, is nowadays the traffic would be so bad that you couldn't do it, right? No. So just, but then, I know everybody says it gets so tired of these old people and the now and then stuff, right? But there really was a lot of now and then, right? There really is a lot of, like, now and then stuff going on. May have to redo some of these flowers. I was hoping I could uh, just kind of get them in there just this way, but I can see where I'm not going to paint them like that. And so this is a commission. I'll just keep painting that until, uh, you know, I'm done, but... Again, like the snowman we did last night, paintings like this require a lot of layers. They don't just, you don't just get these um, by accident. And no two water lilies have the same, um, you know, color leaf. Though it, they might appear to be that in the picture. Look this really dark green. But to this day, I mean, you know, when, when Cinema and I went to, you know, paint in France, and the first thing she did was get a, we got her a bicycle, and she was bicycling every, you know, in France all over. So she loves bicycling, and it's one of her, uh, probably some of her best memories of going to school in Southern California was the bicycles and being able to do that. Oh, you know, and the thing with our pond, our pond was that the ducks were doing pretty well because they could fly. So they were pretty safe from the coyotes and some of the critters. But unfortunately, the, uh, the chickens were not so lucky. And um, we really, when we mo moved there, I guess, you know, it's not like Google. You can look up the wildlife in your area kind of thing, right? No idea what lived there, right? And there were these raccoons. And this one raccoon, he waited until the chickens were full grown. And the chickens were so cute because they lived with the ducks and they thought they were ducks too. And every once in a while they'd try to fly 
and then they'd land in the water and then paddle, or they'd go try to swim in the water like the ducks, and then they'd paddle back because they realized they weren't ducks. They really weren't sure what they were because they lived with the ducks. But um, uh, let's see, where was I with this? You have to help me out when I'm th thinking about painting. I'm just thinking of colors and telling duck stories. But uh, so anyway, the chickens. Um, one day, uh, you know, we're up at the top of the hill and we hear the squawking and carrying on like um, somebody's being murdered down by the pond. And lo and behold, they were. Um, our chickens had been, uh, a, a raccoon swam out and killed and ate them all but one. And there was this frantic, traumatized chicken that, um, well, who wouldn't be traumatized, right? Uh, running around um, like a chicken with his head cut off, but he still had his head, right? And um, we realized that the chicken, he could not be out there on the island. As much as, as clever as we thought we had been, um, he could not be there because... Uh, he would get eaten. So basically, then what happened is we had these neighbors um, that uh, that had animals, and um, and this one lady, she didn't just have animals. She was like like PETA before there was a PETA. Okay, she was like a PETA person, and she she. Um, she didn't like the fact that um, um, that our chickens were almost getting eaten, so of course she wanted to help, right? <clears throat> and so we said, well, can we take this chicken over to you? So he, she had a special little hen house built for him, and he w went to her house. And then we realized that the ducks weren't really that safe either, much as we wanted the ducks, um, they they were not. That was not a safe environment for ducks either. So we told her we had we had these ducks, and um, there's another story I'll have to tell you another time. About how Colby taught them to fly. These ducks. Who, who the ducks? Yeah, taught them to I fly. That one. Yeah. yeah, he taught them to fly, and. Um, well, they should fly. Well, yeah, but they didn't know they could fly. Now they did, <laughs> you know, kind of thing, right? They so they were chickens. Yeah, well, they didn't know what they were, you know, because we, we confused the wildlife big time, right? <laughs> so you're the ones to blame. So, anyhow, uh, she, we live very close to a place called Rancho Santa Fe in Southern California, which is where the really, really rich people live. It's country property, and they, they've got some serious bucks, right? And... Um, That's where we lived, and um, so uh, anyway, she she found this woman in Southern California, living in Rancho Santa Fe, and her life was, wait for it, was was <laughs> her life mission was ducks. Now, you know, how would you find someone like that? Their life mission is ducks. That's all. She had a big property, oodles of money. And her and, life mission was ducks? And her, the ducks, that was her thing. And she loved ducks, and she had three beautiful, like, Disney-like land-type ponds where the ducks were, okay? And... Um, she, uh, when, when she was a pro, and two, and three full-time, uh, three full-time guys, you know, laborers, that their job was to take care of her ducks. That's all they did, take care of her ducks. I don't know, you know. And so, and how my friend knew her was just extraordinary, too. And how would you find someone like this? So anyway, when she told, we told her that we needed to find a home for the ducks because we were kind of traumatized after what happened to the chickens. And, and Colby didn't want anything to, bad to happen to the ducks. He, he loved those ducks and didn't want anything bad to happen. 
So um, she arranged for that lady to take our ducks. And um, what was neat was she said, if they don't like the pond, I will build them their own pond. And uh, oh, and the ponds were all covered with screens and everything, so no flying animals could get them, right? No riffraff going no, on there. Yeah, so, um, so she said, I'll build it. And my thought at the time was, she's got all this money. We're really close to Tijuana, the Mexican border. And with the, the poverty down there at, at that time was, I don't know if it's changed, but it was pretty, pretty dramatic, okay? And I thought, this is what she can, this is, an interesting, um, this is interesting because it's, it's an interesting hobby. When I would have thought it would have been more fun to build playgrounds for kids or, I don't know, something, right? But um, anyway, uh, anyway, that's where our ducks went to live, was with her and her pond. So they, and I had all my animals my horses and everything um, willed to this lady in my will because I knew she'd find home for them, right? And um, I know you guys are laughing and going, you did what? I go, I know. I, I, I did. I had our animals will, a will to her. Well, she was like the right person. Oh, she was. And then... Years later, like 20 years later, she tracked me down and she said, are any of those animals still alive? Do I need to be worried about them? Huh? <laughs> Too late. I, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, John, I mean, just, um, you just don't, you, you don't, don't find know. friends like that. You know what I mean? That was a lovely thing she did and I'm very grateful. Um, kind of a cowardly on my part to dump like that on someone and not even keep track of where they are after the animals and tell her the animals have been sold. I'm a bad person, you know, for sure. But, uh, yeah, that's what she did. So... Still working on this. I have to dry it. What do you think so far? I think it's looking like a lily pond. Yeah, like a lily pond, right? I think I can get a little better point on this small painting doing it this way with the Posca pen to get the shape of these leaves a little better. Well, this is the Artisto. A little bit scratchy. I 
to dry this really well, you don't want to do this. I think I didn't finish this one. Well, we'll come back and work on that one. Even a little 8x10 painting. These, these take a little time. That's just all there is to it. They... Lily pads are never just one thing. Nothing is ever just one thing. And um, something like this takes just a little bit of time. Oh, let's see, I think I put some pens out somewhere. I have those. Well, I'll just use a brush. But this lady ended up that with our pets, that ended up with them. She ended up with uh, 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 the, the, our parrot too, Beulah. She got Beulah, and um, which was a good thing. Beulah needed a good home, and she. She had lots of, but she didn't have a big property. She didn't keep the animals herself. She just found homes for them. Does that make sense? That's all. She just found the homes for them. So she was a home finder. Yeah, she was uh, kind of like a marriage broker, only with your animals, right? That's what she did, and uh, it was a nice, you know, and that, you know, she, and that was a nice thing to do because, of course, um, you know, animals need advocacies, advocates, and she was one. I would say she was a, when she said it was a good way to describe her as an animal, very serious animal advocate. And she did a good job, and I was glad when somebody was in our neighborhood like that to her, who could do that. So, paintings upside down. Yeah, it is. I, I, sometimes I find it easier to bring a um, a um, the brush toward me rather than away from me. Oh, absolutely. You know, it just I, I guess you know, like for instance, when people are left-handed, John, they um, um, might do this differently. Uh, so that's that's uh, what if I'm doing this um, That allows me to, um, sometimes, I, then I can just paint shapes. If I'm turning it upside down, I can paint shapes. But even though we had country property, we had the cats, but we never got a dog. But we did have. Everybody should have a dog. Well, you know, that's true, but, you know. Um, we always had a dog. Well, I guess you and Karen did, right? You and Karen always had dogs, right? We had dogs in college. Dogs in who? Ta dogs in college. We got the apartment. Yeah. We got Charlie. Oh, the do Charlie. Charlie was a dog first. Oh, you got the dog and then the kid. Okay, yeah. I get it. She was classified as the town tramp because she'd take all the other dogs down to the swimming hole. Is that right? Mm hmm Yeah, one of the guys, he was always pissed. Why do you let your dog run around like that? 
Well, she's a dog and she wants to go swimming. Well, our neighbor had these two dogs in June and she lived next door to us. And she was an older gal in her late 60s. And um, she was fun because she, she lived in the um, Hollywood era um, when moved, her sister-in-law was Catherine Grayson, the actress. And so she had stories about what it was like in Hollywood in the um, uh, back in those days, okay? But she let her dogs roam everywhere and, and no, no consideration to um, anybody else. And, and she had property, but, uh, but she didn't care that the dogs were fenced or whatever her deal was. She, she, and I, I personally didn't agree with that. So dogs, sorry, you would have heard it from me. I, I didn't. I personally didn't agree with that. Well, you know, this you thing of, of just letting your dog run willy-nilly places. And the neighbor, the people that lived next to us and her that, that shared the driveway, they had orange trees and big orange, orange orchard. They never shared the oranges. I don't think they ever did anything with them, but they had... Um, they had some Hispanic help that probably was not legal that worked their property, okay? And um, her dogs got into, and, and the, um, her dogs got into the laundry from those guys, okay? And, um, uh, and uh, took the lines, the, the, their clothes off the clothesline that they had out in their backyard because her backyard was right next to theirs, okay? And she, um, in June, um, she's passed away now. No statue, statue of limitations on some of these stories because she's gone. She, um, Uh, she, her, the dogs brought these, these guys' clothes home, and they didn't have many clothes, right? Because they were, you know, right? So she put them and burned them rather than get caught with her dogs that torn them up. I, are you gasping right now? I am. Uh, and they had nothing. And she didn't see that that was crummy. Right? Um, and so one day, um, she calls me up and, you know, we, we weren't exactly friends, but we were neighbors, right? And she calls me up and she said, you know, you really ought to pick up stuff on your property more. Because so we just had, we had fences, but they were just like crap pipe fences, you know, wooden fences. Her dogs could come. She said, um, my dogs um, have brought home some uh, uh, poison. Uh, I guess it was some sort of poison for the uh, plants or something, or trees or something in a you know little powdered can. They and and um, they could have died because you don't pick up your shit, kind of thing, right? Now my mouth's hanging open, right? Because I'm thinking. Oh gosh, really? Um, um, the, here's the thought: Why not keep your dogs on your own property? <laughs> what do you think, John? That's a good idea. So that I mean that was a thought to me. That was my first thought. But yep. you know, the one thing I just—it's just—it's never productive to fight with people. I don't like to do that ever. So we just. Um, we just laughed and went ahead and did our own thing and just totally ignored her. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We should do that, June. Absolutely. You betcha. And then just went on doing whatever we do. Um, uh, because her dogs were the first ones to maybe attack the ducks in the pond and try to eat them. Right? Uh, they, they were, the, you know... The, there was a, definitely a, 
a possibility that that could have happened. They didn't, but they, you know, they were around, right? Um, so uh, this is coming along. I know it's upside down, but um, <laughs> just I think it's coming along, right, you guys? So, so there. Okay, Paige has claimed that one. Paige? Yep. She's on. She saw it. She goes, "Have anyone taken it?" I go, "Nope." She goes, "Have now." <laughs> uh, okay. Awesome. And she just gives a donation. How sweet of you. Oh, thank you. We'll we'll get to, we'll be able to replace that camera soon. Oh, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a, we're at the time that's a dynamite time. Blow it all up and need to reboot and start again. I know. And when Cinnamon and John were living at the house la oh. last year, they had to sell film, so they cleared out our dining room. We didn't have a dining room. We just had no. stuff in there. We didn't weren't eating in there or anything. But um, and they turned that that room into a, a into a studio. Yep. And uh, and they built some scaffolding up on the walls, and they they were busy little bees over there. <laughs> Just <laughs> that's a nice way to put it. And um, so when they were filming, we had to be quiet because they would film in the morning. It was tough, all of us living in the same house and trying. We managed to work it out, right? And um, anyhow, the, um, the when they moved back, when they moved to Michigan, they did leave the um, the scaffolding up for a studio, and because um, they were in hurry, you know, they were in hurry, things had to go, and you know, they left it up. But we need to clean up this room. It's over a three-car garage, and it's a big game room over a three-car garage, and we need to redesign the studio. So if I wanted to, uh, say, paint on an easel and show that to you, I could, or we could move the cameras, and we need some new stuff. And it's, if you've ever watched any of those um, fixer-upper home shows, right? Um, one of the things they do is they kind of clear everything out, start from ground zero. And we can't really do that in film. But if we were to temporarily move the studio down into the dining room, it's just us there, so it doesn't really matter. We film when we film, right? So there's no noise conflict. No, there's only us right? in the house. Yeah. Stuffy staff is usually pretty quiet. Yeah. So there's no, absolutely, there's no, no, no noise conflict. So we could technically uh, do that and, uh, and then do something with up here. Uh, All right, let's flip it around now. Okay. Now it's right side up. I thought all the water's gonna fall out of the pond. Did you? I did. There are uh, good colors in that. There are, aren't there? Um, there are good colors in this. And uh, I'm glad you like it. I does. Put in my other little flowers here. And uh, whoops, that was a lot of paint on that. Everybody wonders why I, I um, wipe my brush off. It's for that reason. Oh, that's why. So let's put a little bit more of this blue color right back here on this leaf. Just because I want a little contrast on that. And just, do you have a little frame somewhere, John? Oh, you and your frame. 
Eight by ten, it should be one of those colored ones. Is this one from one of your photos? Yeah, this is one we shot over in Ireland. Yeah, this was a, uh, this story, you know, that is really cool too. Um, how we, this cab driver took us to this arboretum that's like over 100 years old. With all different trees from all around the world. Uh, or, or around in this beautiful lily pond. And um, that was pretty nifty, right? Yeah. Let's see, eight by 10, eight by 10. 12 by 12, 9 by 12. Oh, you know, we have the 8 by 10 or the funny ones. We got the little funny pine wood ones. Yeah, I'm seeing what color. They're in the hallway. The blue would look nice on that. Yeah, I think the blue or the green would look pretty too, yeah, though, I'm don't you bring think? Those too. These, uh, uh, these frames we got, you get at Jerry's, and they, they make them in odd sizes, 8 by 10, and then you, we don't have, they don't have a 9 by 12. They've got an 8 by 10. But if they, I would have them in all sizes um, if they did, because yeah, I just. I don't understand um, why they don't. And I don't know, but I, like I say, it's I would have irritating. them in all, all sizes. Yeah, we got three. You got a light blue, then you got the turquoisey blue, then you got the green. I'm gonna put it right here next to you, little boss. You should be able to get them in there. They do, they have them in, like I say, all sizes. Not quite done with this, but I just, you know, I just want to do the finishing touches on this. That was a good trip in Ireland. I liked Ireland. You, you like what? Ireland. Oh, I think probably one of my favorite places that we visited this year was Ireland. Um, and I think a lot of it was because our taxi driver was so marvelous. Yeah. And he took us around and showed us his Ireland, not the tourist Ireland. Um, we, um, that's a big difference. Uh, didn't, we found that that, finding a taxi driver, we found one in Edinburgh that took us, you know, we said, can you, can you take us around? And, um, and he did, and it was great. So, um, hope you don't mind me just fiddling with this painting, but, uh, painting. but I think you guys like the story of the, the heist, the great heist. Um, I've got all these great colors and I want to use them. Wasn't Cinema supposed to move to Ireland? She was, and they, um, it got to be late. They had some difficulty getting through all the paperwork. Well, you have all the Ukrainians that were coming in. Yeah. That's what kind of delayed everything. Yeah. They so, yeah. That little so they got all their paperwork finally. They can go if they want. Yeah. But right now their children are loving Michigan. And they're all engrossed in the and Michigan they're life. and they're into the wrestling programs and the you know, their son is uh, um they just the kids kinda took priority. And so they think that that they can at some point, because they've got the paperwork, they could maybe go over there for a summer and still continue, you know, their store, you know, their um, uh, still continue their um, their adventure and and all their YouTube stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is where people just stop, and I don't. Does that make sense? <laughs> no. Because. Um, Luna wants the one that needs a Canadian passport, right? Yeah, well, she's Canadian. Yeah, but she got her passport. Uh, well, she she had a, some, she has a Canadian passport. She just needed an American one. Yeah, they oh. finally got it all done. Um, 
they had to go to the Canadian Embassy to get all the paperwork and everything. It was quite a, quite a thing. Their adventures in New York City. <laughs> they lived in the, you know Pennsylvania for so long and never, never made made it there. And um, you know if you haven't if you haven't been, you know big cities. I don't care where you are in the world. You know if the big giant cities are not anywhere near as fun as quaint little villages to me. No, they're not. Uh, I'm just keeping adding my flowers here, and um, I'll tell you, this to me is the fun part, going back and putting on all the lights in the darks and getting the shapes. This for me, that, that is the fun, fun part. But I think what John and I liked about Ireland was the fact that we went to Cork and there's, I, I know they have big cities too, but we didn't stop at any of those, right? So our experience was a little different, right? Yes. Yeah, we stayed with the small town. Well, yeah. I mean, we're from a big city. Why do we want to go visit a big city? And also, as artists, there's nothing in particularly in a big city that we want to paint, right? No. There's just, not yet. you know, there's not, you know, there may be, but, you know, for the most part, that's not what we look for. And, uh, and, uh, um, it, you know, for something to paint, you know, and we're looking for when we travel. That is not, you know, what we're going for. But, you know, that's okay. Somebody else may want to do that, and that's fine. It's just, that's just not us, right? So, I think I want to... I'll just take a little of this blue color and just put this put the water back here. Can't use that brush. Let's see, I know I have more than let's get a different brush. Let's just put a little paint on this brush here. There you go. Just need the brush strokes going across this way. And then we'll take a little bit of the yellow and white, the yellow oxide and white, and do this. There, okay. 
may have to dry that, and then I'll put this in the frame and just do my final touches. But I'd say I'm pretty happy with um, with how this came out, and I just will finish that one flower in the frame. I'm gonna dry this. So where'd you put it, John? The frames are right next to you there, boss. Okay. Push them on carefully because they have their pins. If it doesn't go on, don't force it. See, I'm mean, just want to say, I think that that green one's pretty. I like that green. But John thinks we might might like the blue. That's mm, that's, not, that's not bad either. The blue's kind of nice. You know, try the light blue though. I don't know. I'm liking the good. green so far, and then I've got the real light blue. These are from Jerry's, and they're 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 really nice, and they're not expensive. I don't and just, they just, um, they I think, the like I say, if they made, okay, oh, I like that's that. nice too. Yeah, so I personally kind of like that. So they've got these little brads, you can. You just got to be careful. Where'd you, did you get them all pushed back up? I got them all pushed back, but the canvas are really tight for that. Well, maybe, something like that. All right, you just got to imagine that it's framed. Yeah. All right, fine. like that. All right. You see it? Yeah. Can you huh? Square it up on the table. Sure. Like that. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Okay. There you go, Paige. So Paige. that's a. Hope you like it. Yeah, I hope you like it too, since, you know. And how much paint are on your hands? Do you have a lot of paint on your hands? Uh, do I have a lot of paint? Just some. <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing to write home about, right? Nothing to write home about. Uh, You're so cute. I'll uh, just uh, play with this, and I'll go ahead and sign it. And uh, There we go. I think that's um, that works for me. Just need a few little more of these white streaks going across the. Just same ones. I'm not making more. I'm just kind of brightening up the ones that I have. This is just this is where you know when you're doing things like this you can spend time on something like leaves because as you do different layers you can you know you start with a color and just start glazing over Okay, all right. So happy days. I'm gonna just take the little Posca pen. I like to put it in the frame too to see where I should sign it. And I will sign it right here. Okay. Ms. Page says, love it. Thank you so much, woo hoo. Woo hoo, all right, I'm so glad you like it. <laughs> it's awesome, right? That is just, uh, that is fabulous. So glad you like it. And um, uh, like I say, all all um, paintings will be shipped after New Year because we don't want to take a chance on them getting lost no. in the holiday rush where not much goes on Uh, other than that. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys liked my water caper story for story time and had fun hanging out in the studio while I painted water lilies. 
And hi, Andrew, and thanks for hanging out with us, and all the best, and uh, we'll see you guys maybe tomorrow. One never knows. Make sure you get the newsletter, email, or... Yeah, you want to you want to make sure that you're uh, that you've signed up for the right stuff, right? Yep. There Hope we go. Awesome. All right. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.